Hey, from Zunch Trey here, and welcome to our Saturday edition video of doing an upgrading commander build on the tier 10 Russian destroyer Delny. So this is a newer, newest ship uh, in the Russian tech tree. Uh, in terms of it being replaced, as the Habarovsk used to be here, but now they moved it to the armory for coal, and replaced it with Delny, which kind of follows the line a bit better, um, I would say in my opinion, uh, especially when you're looking at Tashkent. So let's uh, first talk about uh, the armor and the type of destroyer we're talking about here. So you have three types of destroyers in World Warships. You have gunboats, you have dest torpedo destroyers, and then you have hybrids, which is a mix of the two. Uh, Delny is very much a gunboat. Um, that usually means she has poor concealment, torps aren't as good, um, however, she trades off and usually having pretty uh, decent DPM and maybe even a little bit more tanky armor. So uh, the 13 millimeter plating up here on the superstructure, uh, not surprising. We have 19 millimeter on the bow and stern, but then we get this really trollish 50 millimeter side plating. So um, a lot of some destroyers are not going to be able to pin this. Uh, so it's very trollish. So when you're uh, enemy destroyer and you're going up against Delny, what you want to aim for more is that big uh, front nose in the bow. Uh, maybe you get some shots on this part of the superstructure or back here um, on the stern. So really trollish armor scheme. So um, sometimes you can get away with a lot more um, in Delny uh, because of that 50 millimeter plating than you can with other destroyers. Looking at the modules, so being the top tier, you have no other uh, modules uh, to research. With the upgrade and commander build we have right now, no, that's going to play a role in what we see here on the modules. So our reload time right now is 4.2 seconds, 180 degree turn time of 10.3 seconds. With the hull, we have 26,200, which um, is above average in terms of the health pool you find on tier 10 destroyers. And the armor all the way from 12 to 50 millimeter. Torpedoes, um, you actually get 10 kilometer torpedoes. Um, I think on Havarosk, they're either four or six. Six, yeah. So that's a bit of a step up um, in terms of what you have here um, on Delny. Um, has a long reload time of 129 seconds. So uh, rather different in terms of the length of reload time on the torpedoes in comparison to the Tashkent. Maximum damage 15,100, and they're 60 knot speed torpedoes. So they're not the fastest. Uh, there's a lot more faster torpedoes. Um, I would say 65 maybe is more the average. Um, then you look at Holland, which can just throw torps really fast. Your main battery firing range with my commander build is 15.8 kilometers. So we essentially have the gun range of a Des Moines <laughs> here on the Delny. Um, if you do not take, if you go stock range uh, with the Des Moines cell. So, um, but with this setup here, it means you're really good at open gun boating uh, at range. Maybe you're trolling some battleships, some heavy cruisers at that 13, 14, 15 kilometer range. Um, though the shell travel time, you have to take into consideration there. Propulsion, uh, 43.5 knots. This is without taking the Sierra Mike combat signal or activating engine boost, which I believe should get us up over 50 knots. So she is uh, definitely a fast uh, destroyer. In terms of upgrades, we've taken for the first lot the main armaments modification one. This reduces the risk of our main battery and torpedo tubes from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Our main battery survivability and torpedo tube survivability is improved by plus 50%. And if either of those should become uh, incapacitated, the repair time is reduced by negative 20%. So this is just a very traditional, very good upgraded take on destroyers. We also have auxiliary armaments. This is for secondary battery and AA mount survivability. Doesn't really matter here. And then magazine modification, risk of your ship's magazine detonating, negative 70%. But if you have been around on my channel long enough, you know I'm gonna recommend taking the Juliet Charlie combat signal which completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. So you take this random, ranked, clan battles. Um, that's where you, you really want to make sure that you're using that. For slot two, you have a damage control system modification one, 
risk of firing and flooding is reduced. This is much more you're going to see on cruisers and battleships. I don't recommend taking it on Delny. What I do recommend taking on Delny is the engine room protection. Uh, it's, it reduces the risk of your engine and steering gears from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Your engine repair time and steering gear repair time, if they should get knocked out and you don't have your damage control party available, for, as an example, negative 20%. Um, so that's what I have mounted. You also have engine boost modification one. Uh, this extends the, increases the action time of your engine boost modification or your engine boost consumable, which right now has an action time of 120 seconds. So if I pull up uh, my calculator here, I think I know what it is, but I want to make sure. Yeah, you had 36 seconds on, so then you're at 156 second action time. Um, I prefer more the engine room protection in this instance. I mean, it's not the longest lasting um, long duration engine boost, but because you're oft often open gun boating and your concealment's poor, I like to try to keep uh, my engine and steering gears in uh, working order. For slot three, you have the main battery modification two, which improves, increases your traverse speed of the main turrets. Right now, our, our we have a 180 degree turn time of 10.3 seconds. Uh, so that's not bad. It's, uh, I think it's decent. And of course, the faster, the better. But it, by for me, it has been no issue. In the shakedown cruise video we had yesterday, uh, it didn't uh, seem much of an issue to me at all. Your AA guns modification, this is the priority AA sector preparation time, negative 20%. Um, I don't recommend that. When we're looking at the AA defense, it's okay. It's at 60. Um, but if you want to take a, a destroyer for like um, AA purposes, like the tier, Holland is like the first destroyer that comes to my mind. Um, even Marceau can do uh, decent in holding her own. So you can see here I have the aiming systems modification one mounted. Um, this increases the firing accuracy of the main battery. Secondary battery accelerates traverse speed of the torpedo tubes and would extend the firing range of the secondary battery. Um, so to check here, no, we only have main battery. We do not have a secondary battery guns on a destroyer. I think there's only like a, a very small handful that actually have a secondary battery um, on a destroyer in the game, like two or three max. Um, but I'm mainly taking this for the shell dispersion, okay? It's really nice um, having a negative 7% because it means your maximum horizontal dispersion and your maximum vertical dispersion uh, are shrunk. Like it's a little bit tighter. So basically you're shaving off X amount of meters horizontally and vertically. So your shots are going to land maybe a little bit more where you're aiming. Um, this is what I have tend, uh, what I like to take um, just to get that little bit of edge in my accuracy, um, especially if I'm combating other enemy destroyers just the fact that oh i might be able to land two or three more shells in engagement could be the difference maybe between life or death you also have torpedo tubes modification one this is something you'll see much more on a torpedo build um destroyer or just torpedo uh destroyer um i don't really recommend taking it here on delny uh there's other destroyers that play the torpedo role much better than delny but delny what she does is the guns it's a smoke generator, but I'm running repair party, so this is useless to me. Um, the action time of the smoke generator is 20 seconds. So I don't really see the value um, in taking this as it would basically be 22 minute. Yeah, it gets us up a tiny but several seconds, but it's nothing major. This is what I recommend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i'm laughing because yesterday's video the shakedown cruise i just did so many like things questionable it just it just seemed really weird as my first battle of the day i thought i had mounted propulsion modification one in that video but apparently i had mounted steering gears modification um that's hysterical uh no we'll go ahead and spin the balloons to keep it um so I'll get to what you should take here in a minute. Um, damage control system modification two, fire extinguishing time and flooding recovery time, negative 15%. Um, this is, again, something you're going to see more on cruisers, especially battle cruisers, uh, battleships, um, where this isn't going to be much of an issue for you as a destroyer. I mean, yeah, you can get uh, 
caught on fire, but you're so small, you don't, you rarely take, I mean, you can take torpedoes. If you, I mean, if you take two, you're basically dead in a shorter, right? Um, but what helps you avoid those types of situations is the propulsion modification one. Um, this reduces time to full speed, so time to take, uh, to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative 50% accelerating. I thought I had this mounted in yesterday's video when I was kind of showing you equipping Delny, but I totally didn't. That's hysterical. Um, Cause yeah, now I'm thinking, I'm like, wait, it didn't seem that I took off as quickly as I would want to. And the reading, the steering gears, they, I mean, the maneuverability didn't feel bad. Um, this is what I like. I like this because when you're an open gunboat destroyer, you, if you watched yesterday's video, you know, when you saw that Montana, you know, he's like 14, 15 kilometers away, takes a shot at us. All we do is simply accelerate from it being a standstill and we avoid the salvo. Uh, so you control a lot of destroyers, um, especially when you're dealing with enemy destroyers, you slow down, you speed up, especially when you have the engine boost consumable going because it makes it that much more responsive. Um, so I really like this and I've had a lot of success in taking this on my gunboat destroyers, especially Tashkent as an example, the tier nine Russian destroyer um, preceding Delny. Steering gears modification one, this reduces your rudder shift time by negative 20%. So when we're looking at maneuverability, uh, rudder shift time, five seconds, okay? So basically what this did is, is it brought it down to four seconds for me. I'm reading that right? Yeah, four seconds. Um, so that's nice. I don't see one second being a huge difference on destroyer. I usually always just go for propulsion modification on destroyers. Um, I've hardly ever taken steering gears. This is something I might take more on the lighthouse build, like uh, maybe a cruiser or a minotaur as an example. Um, well, yeah, minotaur because you can't, you don't get propulsion because it's already built in. Um, but here on Delny, I don't really recommend it. What I like about propulsion modification, like again, it's the juking, but also if you see torpedoes coming at you, uh, you can uh, increase your speed, get out of the way really quick. Uh, you're sitting in a smoke screen, which you should be angled or like nose in if you know there's an image destroyer outside the smoke in the direction roughly where you know they're at. Um, as you're just, you're taking chances, um, that's another reason why I like taking this repair party. Uh, so I don't have to kind of worry about just sitting in the smoke and eating a bunch of torpedoes. You also have depth charge uh, modification one, number of charges two. I noticed when I was uh, looking at the, or editing the clip for yesterday's video, um, the number of charges uh, that I dropped, 16 and one bombs in a charge, 16. I was kind of surprised by that. Um, it seemed that it lasted a lot longer than other stores, as an example. Um, that was just my thought. Yeah, 14, uh, it was Kiev have eight. Yeah, so I feel like I'm more used to that eight to 10. So the fact that they were going on so long yesterday in the video, I thought I'd already used two charges, but I only used one charge. So that's kind of the, when you're playing a ship for the first time, you're getting the feel for it, right? That's what a shakedown cruise is. Um, so when we're looking at the depth charge modification, you already have a lot of charges um, in comparison to a lot of the other destroyers in the game like I just showed you. So um, I don't see that as a thing. It's just more games to working on some marines. Yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. If you have matches without uh, destroyers then or without submarines, then this upgrade becomes useless, right? So take something you know that you're definitely going to want to use. For the fifth slot, you have Torpedo Lookout System. This works much better for something like a destroyer that maybe already has Hydroacoustic Search. Um, I've never taken this skill on a destroyer because there are two other modules here that I think are much better. So I've taken Concealment System Modification 1. Uh, with the camouflage on our ship right now, uh, you can see it's uh, 7.4 by sea, 3.6 by air. This reduces your ship's detectability range by negative 10%. Uh, squadron detectability range, negative 10%. Dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5%, so they're not quite as accurate as an example when you're shooting um, at you. So I like that. 
Um, some people just forego the concealment system modification one on a gunboat store, maybe like Delny, like Haberosk. Um, I like it because it gets me down to 7.4, where otherwise, uh, we're like 8.5, roughly, something like that. Because there are these situations where I am a player who plays for the last half of the match. I mean, I'm playing for the first half of the match, but my, my goal is I survive the last half of the battle. Um, and so it means I could be the last destroyer alive. And I'm the one who has to cap, even though my concealment is 7.4. It's a lot harder to do that if your concealment's over 8.5. Um, and I like trying to get the edge. So let's say you're running up on an enemy destroyer who has better concealment than you. You know, so let's say they have six uh, kilometer concealment, but you have your engine boost going, you're diving nose in towards them. Uh, then 7.4 to 6 doesn't take very long to subtract that distance, especially if they're not running from you, as an example. So I like this. Um, also, you get the little perk of increased dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5. Now, the other thing that players uh, will also do here is that they'll take the steering gears modification too. Um, this reduces your rotor shift time and accelerates the repair of steering gears. So your rudder shift time goes down by negative 40%, right? So when we were looking at our rudder shift time, four seconds, or sorry, five seconds, and you take, you know, 40%, that drops you down to three second rudder shift time. Um, that is really nice, um, especially when you are going maybe more for a very aggressive gunboat build right? I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but this means you're giving up concealment. Um, I have swung a little bit more towards concealment in most cases with gunboat destroyers. Um, this is usually you're playing, you might not be able to play quite as close because of this because you've uh, not gone the concealment route. Um, so we'll talk about that uh, when we look at the commander. The other uh, one you had was, uh, oops, wrong one. Ship consumables modification one. The action time of consumables, so it means your repair party engine boost can be plus 10%. No, these two are much better to take on Delmi. Um, and I'll, again, like I said, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the commander. The sixth upgrade slot, you see I'm taking main battery modification three. It reduces your main battery reload time by negative 12%. I think without this, when I was equipping it, uh, it was like 4.8 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. So with it being a gunboat destroyer, I want to pump out as much DPM as possible. So I went for this skill. It does slow down your main battery traverse speed, negative 13%. Uh, we were nine seconds something, um, and that bumped us up to 10.3. Um, again, it's not a big difference, uh, especially for a destroyer, as the guns tend to have a pretty decent 180 degree turn time. You have to put your tubes Modification two, uh, increases your reload time. Again, this is something you're gonna find much more on a hybrid or a even, or definitely on a torpedo build type destroyer like Shimakaze, uh, Holland. Uh, you could, Holland's a bit of a hybrid case, right? Um, so you could go for this, not on Delmi. Um, you wanna go for your DPM with your main battery guns. Auxiliary armaments modification two, Secondary battery load time doesn't apply to us. Um, what does apply to us is the AA damage, plus 15% from continuous, plus 15 from shell explosions, um, and we get some more flack when the A defenses, when the defensive A fire consumable is active. We don't have that consumable, so we're only getting the continuous AA damage and the damage from AA shell explosions. If you want to do an AA build destroyer kind of thing, you're much more looking at something like a Marceau. Um, or um, Holland uh, that are known for that. Consumables, uh, we have your standard damage control party, action time, five seconds, reload time, 40 seconds. You have unlimited number of these charges. Then you have the repair party. Um, partially restores the ship's HP by repairing any light damage. I prefer not taking smoke on my... Um, on Tashkent, uh, on Delny. And so because I'm not taking smoke, it means I can I can afford to take a little bit more damage if, like I was explaining in yesterday's video, if I take damage, it was unfortunate, uh, and maybe I made a mistake, then I can heal that damage back up. Uh, where for smoke, I can't do that. 
So it's 101 HP per second, but if we mount the India Delta combat signal, comes up here, uh, it increases the amount of HP covered when the repair party consumable is used. So when we come back here, we go from 130 to 157 HP per second. So just that little bit more, um, to me, in my opinion, is nice, so I run that. Yeah, smoke generator, you could do that. Um, part of why I want to ch maybe challenge you if the gunboat line is newer to you, the smoke generator, to me, I was still trying to play my gunboat destroyers more as a hybrid type destroyer. But when I first so did not take smoke generator and I took a pair party, I felt like I discovered this gunboat line in a whole new way. And I love it and really enjoy it. So, um, so take a gamble, take a pair party. Um, I prefer that much more on Delmi in Tashkent. Then you have engine boost. Uh, we talked a little bit about this already. It improves, increases your maximum speed by plus 8%. Um, you have three charges, 120 second action time, 120 second reload time. Uh, this is really nice and it makes it a lot harder for ships to land shells on you when you're booking across the water. Okay, we're already at like 20, over 20 minutes. I need to get through this. All right, I'm gonna recommend my 10 point build to you um, and then we'll go up from there. Um, and there'll be some differences. I'll kind of talk about the different build options in connection with the upgrades um, once I've kind of gone through what I'm going for. So at one point, you want to take preventive maintenance. It reduces the risk of the main turrets, torpedo tubes, steering gears, and engine from becoming incapacitated by negative 30%. Three-point build, you want to take a last stand. It's a defense skill. Um, if your engine or steering gear gets knocked out, your ship is able to remain uh, partial s uh, speed and maneuverability. Um, this is really important. You don't want to be dead in the water. Um, you do not want to be just simply sailing around in circles if your steering gear gets knocked out. So last stand is really a, a must. Um, very, very uh, important. Survivability expert. Uh, yes, absolutely. You want to take this on destroyers. Um, it increases your health pull for each ship tier by plus 350. So that's what gets us to the 26,200 you're seeing here on the screen. Um, so very valuable to have that as a six point commander. Um, my 10 point uh, build, this is what you're gonna find on like 95% of destroyers in World of Warships uh, run this type of 10 point build. It's the concealment expert. Uh, reduces our ship's detectability range by negative 10%. Now, this is where there can be a difference. Um, and I'll, again, I'll circle on this build um, once I've gone through this but you can give up Concealment Expert and go for Fearless Brawler. You get the permanent effect of an additional explosion in your AA salvos, um, but it's a, there's a can be activated skill tied with this. It reduces the main battery reload time after your ship has been detected by the enemy. So main battery reload time, negative 10%, okay? That means our reload time drops beneath four seconds. Okay, it's going to be like 3.78 uh, seconds if I'm doing the math right off the top of my head. A very viable option. Um, very viable. And I'll talk more about that here in a minute. But I'm going to just go over more what my build is. Okay, so this is what I've done for my 10 points. For uh, 13 points, the next thing I would recommend is the Adrenaline Rush. This enhances the ship parameters for each 1% of HP lost. So our main battery is going to be reloading faster. Our torpedo time, uh, torpedo tube reload time is going to be reloading faster. Uh, our secondary, oh, we don't have secondaries. Uh, our continuous AA damage gets buffed. It, it goes up, um, but maybe you've had an AA gun or two knocked out on your ship already. Um, so it's really the main battery and the torpedo tube reload time. Um, so then that means uh, with this skill, your main battery reload time can drop beneath four seconds if you've lost enough health. Uh, your torpedo time, the tube reload time, you can go from uh, 129 seconds to maybe something like 120 seconds, uh, something like that. That's the value of Adrenaline Rush, especially uh, if you pair it with the next skill I'd recommend. This would be a 16 point build, the main battery in a specialist. So our main battery reload time is reduced by negative 5%. So that further feeds into this number we have right now, 4.2 seconds, and this is the permanent effect. And then our AA damage goes up by plus 10%. So right now, our continuous damage is 171. Not great, not fantastic. It's eh, it's okay. 
Um, but uh, it's something, right? But I mainly take this for the main battery reload time. So that's 16 point commander. For a 20 point commander, um, and I did this a couple weeks ago, I finally reached 20 points with this guy. Uh, I took the main battery in AA Expert, okay? Main battery firing range plus 20%. Damage from AA shell explosions plus 15%. So then when you're looking at the AA values, the damage by shell explosions, 1,932. It's pretty notable. So if an uh, enemy aircraft carrier player, if he eats your flak uh, shell explosions, it's going to hurt him. Uh, it's going to knock out probably a few planes if you're lucky enough. But again, the main value, the main reason we take this is the main battery firing range. That's what gets us to that 15.8 kilometers. So um, trying to see here what it would be without. But you're something, you're in the neighborhood of 12 something, 12 kilometers, 12 point something kilometers without this skill. Um, and to me, I just, this is really good. You really want to have this, uh, in my opinion, on your gunboat build, uh, especially something like um, the Delny. Um, when I'd been in something like the Azuma, and there's an enemy Tashkent that was shooting at me from 15 kilometers away, I mean, it's the most frustrating thing because reload time takes a little bit, and he's just farming away happily on me, and I am I only got maybe a, a couple shell hits out of like five or six salvos fired at him. Um, maybe it was probably more than that. And it's really frustrating uh, as a battleship a cruiser player when there's just a destroyer farming you from 14, 15 kilometers away. Um, this is a strength, um, especially if you don't have any enemy destroyers or submarines to go at uh, close range. This is really nice, especially if you try to get to start a fire. Uh, our fire starting chance is 8%. Um, but we can buff that up to 10% with some combat signals. So um, this is really good. The next thing I'd recommend taking is the incoming fire alert. Uh, a warning about a salvo fired at your ship from a distance of more than 4.5 kilometers. So basically you get a little warning indicator. So what this kind of guy is, and it'll say red incoming. Uh, or be, it'll be the color red, and then it'll say incoming with an exclamation point. Um, so this helps you know, like, oh, maybe if you're f firing over an island or you're focusing on another ship that's not aimed at you, and all of a sudden you see incoming, that means another ship's just fired on you. So try to take some invasive maneuvers, uh, engine boost, accelerate, deaccelerate, something like that. So this is my intentions for a 21-point build. Now, as I mentioned, Concealment Expert. You can totally drop Concealment Expert if you don't mind giving up that 10% uh, concealment, and you can go for Fearless Brawler. This is a very, very valid option on this line. It's really up to you whether you, you want concealment or you want Fearless Brawler. Um, because what's nice with this skill, um, you know, you get the course, you get that additional AA shell explosion, um, but it's the reload time after ship has been detected by the enemy. Um, so this would be, you're just firing away. Um, you're in the open, uh, yeah, reload time drops you from 4.2 to 3.7 something seconds. Um, it's nice, uh, 3.78. Um, then you maybe you've lost some health, tie in adrenaline rush, then 3.5 seconds. So it really comes down a lot quicker. But this is, it's it's a good option. It really is. I mean, you can see it's it's recommended uh, for this destroyer. So you could give up concealment and go for that. That's what I would do. Um, I would like to try this out. Probably I'll put this on another Russian commander. Maybe I'll put this on Tashkin or something like that. Um, I don't know. So really, this build, or give up Consumer Expert, take for this brawler. It's a very standard. Uh, I see both builds um, on these Russian destroyers. Um, let's see what else could we do here. Um, da, 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 RPF radio location. Sometimes it's nice to have this on a gunboat destroyer, especially if your concealment is not the best. Because, you know, you're trying to find that last enemy destroyer or there's a submarine on the surface somewhere near you. Uh, directly point to them with this arc so you have a pretty good rough idea of uh, what direction they are. Though you don't know quite how far away they are from you. Um, this is nice, um, but you don't always need this. Um, 
it's valuable, but I would argue these two skills are better than the RPF radio or, or radio location. Sorry. So yeah, um, that would be this build is what I'd recommend. Drop concealment, take fearless brawler, or drop concealment, uh, take radio location, or you could drop main battery A expert and take radio location too. Um, but this is what you're typically going to find on Russian destroyers. So I'm not going to get to the other skills. Um, and then when I was talking about taking the fearless brawler as an example, uh, you could give up concealment here as well. And then you're going to be very high concealment. I mean, if you're like a cruiser, think of Delny as a, a light cruiser with no Citadel. And then you can take steering gears modification too. Um, and you're that much harder to land shots on, so on and so forth. But you have really, you've really given up your concealment. But um, I prefer having the concealment um, because often I'm finding myself as a shorter player having to cap, um, so on and so forth. So I think we're going to wrap that up. So if you have any questions about the other skills, just let me know in the comments. Uh, if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you here next time. Take care.